Good evening, everyone. How are you, Bijane? I'm doing wonderful. Excited to join you tonight for the power of collaboration. Definitely. I'm so excited to have you um, join me. And this is our grant guru, as you see, Miss Bijane Kareem, and I am Dr. Sheikah Houston. Um, I am I'm going to introduce myself and then um, Bijane is going to introduce herself as well. Um, I am Dr. Sheikah Houston. I'm the co-founder of Create and Educate, and welcome to the Power of Collaboration. We have um, done some things on Instagram Live. We've done some things together on in um, Clubhouse. So today we're changing platforms and hoping to uh, reach even more people because there have been so many people interested um, in this particular topic. But we definitely love being able to come together to collaborate because we know that we're also uh, definitely better together. So as I stated, I'm the co-founder of Create and Educate LLC. We are an educational consulting and literary firm. We work with educators providing professional development and leadership literacy and SEL. And we also work with independent authors providing equity and access around gaining access to more schools. So I've been in education for the past 18 years. I've been a teacher, an assistant principal, a principal. And most recently, um, I, I'm the director of secondary interventions for the district that I work in. But as a principal and with my dynamic team of teachers, I was able to improve our school, or we were able to improve our school rather, to report card grades in one year. And one of the strategies that we focused on was making sure that students had access to culturally relevant books and making sure that our classrooms were, um, classroom libraries were filled with great offerings that the students would be interested in reading. So if you are just joining us, um, let us know where you're from. We'd like to know where people are tuning in from and share the information on your page, invite some other authors. So um, Bijane, tell everybody who you are. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Houston. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bijane Kareem. I'm an equity advocate, educator, and author, and founder of BK International Education Consultancy. Um, similar to Dr. Houston, um, I was a, well, actually, I was a STEM major first, and then I transitioned into education, um, was a classroom teacher for several years, was a mentor teacher. Um, as well as worked in a teacher preparation program at a local university. And um, I, after spending some time in education, I really felt the need and the calling to launch BK International Education Consultancy, where our mission is to amplify education equity so children of color can access innovative and inclusive education regardless of where they live, regardless of their zip code. And so um, I wish I knew about Create and Educate when I was in a classroom as an educator. Um, as I mentioned, I was in the classroom for 10 years. And for me, I was frustrated with attending trainings that didn't really move the needle for my kids and also constantly spending out of pocket for supplies. Mm -hmm. um, but I did like helping teachers, which, which, which is what we are here to do today, as well as find those culturally relevant um, materials that really spark my children's interest and move the needles for my kids. And so um, BK International Education Consultancy, we specialize in building pre-K through 12 educators capacity through one, STEAM education, which we call innovative education, as well as grant writing. We want teachers to be able to get what they need for their kids and create those pos positive um, outcomes without mm -hmm. having to spend out of pocket. And classroom books, diverse classroom books are exactly what's on the menu. So I'm excited to talk more about that tonight with Dr. Houston. Back to you, Dr. Houston. Thank you, Bijane. And you are exactly right. Those um, culturally relevant books are so important. And uh, my co-founder, and my partner, um, Tammy Taylor, she's a principal at the elementary level and her school also improved and 
one of the strategies that she used is the same thing that I'm, I'm talking about tonight is just making sure that students and teachers had access to things that are culturally relevant. Um, we focus with our trainings for teachers on literacy and leadership. And, um, you know, that's an area that many schools are trying to make sure that they are improving. And, and many times there are certain demographics that uh, you're targeting more so than others because of the um, achievement gap. And sometimes we, and I put that in quotation marks because a lot of times it's not uh, an actual achievement gap. It's more of an interest gap because we are not putting things in the hands of children that they're actually interested in. So one amen of- Amen to that. I had to give an amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> one of the uh, most important literary strategies is making sure that children are able to connect to text. So if, if you're reading something that's culturally relevant that you see yourself in, that makes it a lot easier for you to be able to connect to versus um, other things that you're not interested in. And so students started to have that true love for reading, that true gravitation towards reading. So uh, what we noticed as principals was that uh, until we found out about this whole new world of independent authors, we um, were basically just buying from our traditional vendors and uh, some of their offerings were not as diverse as, as a lot of the things we were finding with independent authors. So um, we wanted to, after we started our platform, the collaborative, which basically was trying to get parents and educators to come together and uh, smooth that bridge over as far as the pandemic was concerned and, and getting more people talking and working together, uh, that's how we were able to meet a lot of the independent authors. And they were interested in ideas around how to get into more schools. So we developed our um, we developed our conducting um, business with schools program in order to help authors do just that. And we've helped a number of uh, independent authors get a, a larger presence in school. And um, if you've noticed a lot of these, the legislation in certain states where um, a lot of the diverse books and cultural relevant books and, and things that are important that need to be taught are being targeted to um, try to get get those things out of schools. And so we know that those things are needed. Hi, Dr. Ross, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Um, we know that those things are needed in schools and we know that our children need to be able to identify with what they're reading in order to improve their skills and improve their uh, academics. So. Um, our program, Conducting Business with Schools, is something that um, you can find out more information about. I'll put a link in our um, comments here so you can access that and get the information. And um, one of the things that we also have is we've developed an SEL program. How are you, Mr. Stewart? Thank you for joining us. And Dr. Larry, how are you? One of the things we've put together um, is an SEL program for schools because um, a lot of what we've been hearing from our, our educators, friends, is that uh, children are having a little bit of heart, a harder time connecting back to school after being out of school. You know, they're out of their routines. The teachers are needing some more things as far as uh, so making sure that we're building those relationships to address their social and emotional learning. So um, our program for that is something that Vijane will be able to talk with you about uh, getting some grant funding to get things like the culturally relevant books and our SEL program into your schools for free. So we thought this would be a great partnership for us to develop. So I'll turn it over to you, Vijane. Yes, yes. You always drop gems. I appreciate you so much, Dr. Houston. It's always exciting to collaborate and team up to share comprehensive strategies, 
on how to access grants and school funding, either one, because you're an educator and you want to maybe create class, uh, classroom libraries with culturally rich books to increase literacy or help to support social emotional learning and build community um, because kids have been separated or, or, you know, for so long during the pandemic from from their classmates or, or from, you know, remote learning or even for STEM, how we have to do school differently, right? We want to accelerate learning. And I love STEM and STEAM because you get to integrate those content areas. Mm -hmm. So whether if you're an educator and you need libraries or you need PPE or you need a social emotional learning curriculum or you want to do STEM, project-based learning, whatever the case is, um, there is money out there for you to be able to do so. Um, I read some statistics um, just a couple of weeks ago that there was over $400 billion given out in grant funds, wow. $400 billion. Dollars. So why are teachers spending out of pocket? Why are teachers spending out of pocket, right? And then also on the flip side of the coin, even if you're not an educator and say you're an author, I'm an author, um, we're all authors here. <clears throat> so even if you're authors and you want to increase your, your book readers or your impact or increase your sales, you can also go after grants to be able to purchase those books and maybe donate them to a school or a community center or program. So it's a win-win uh, situation where kids can have access to what they need. And so what I do know is that when educators um, are innovative and culturally relevant, students thrive and communities are better for it. So I want to share a little insider secret on who funds, let's say, literacy projects, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what authors and educators should be mindful of. Foundations are the second largest funders of grants. Wow. Foundations are the second largest funders of grants. So there are foundations that fund a variety of things, whether it's literacy programs, projects, whether it's um, for SEL, social and emotional learning, whether it's for STEM, science, technology, arts, and mathematics, uh, you, you name it, all type of programs, maybe even programs for parental engagement or for um, maybe supports for educators, whatever the case may be, um, there are foundations that fund a variety of things. And notably, Foundations are also aware of the impact that the pandemic has had on students and children and are creating grant programs to help support that and help to um, accelerate learning or learning recovery, you know, whatever that buzzword is right now. They are increasing their investments and pour it into education. So that's why I'm passionate about helping educators and authors get what they need. So one way that I'm doing that is that at BK International, we are offering coaching, we're offering training, even self-paced courses and toolkits uh, to help uh, authors, educators to um, have access to what are the secrets that grant writers look for and how do I unpack that in a user-friendly way um, mm -hmm. and reduce my learning curve and being able to tap into that $400 billion that's out there. <laughs> Would wow. you like to tap into some of those funds, Dr. Houston? Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I could put them to good use. I know that's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to pass it back over to you for, for, for a quick second. Well, thank you. And that's why Bijanae is the grant guru. She knows all there is to know about grants. And um, a lot of times, you know, that money isn't even sought after. So to have that information is uh, really going to be impactful for a lot of people and definitely need it. So thank you, Bijanae, for sharing that information. And just to um, reiterate some of the things that she's talked about, um, Tammy and I with Create and Educate um, have a partnership with Pear Inc., out of uh, Massachusetts with Dr. Gil Nome, and he has written a grant where we're able to give school leaders that tune into our show on Saturday um, his book about making sure we're 
getting through the pandemic as educators for free. So she's right. These grants do exist. Uh, we are recipients of that and partnered with Dr. Nome from the um, Harvard Medical School. So um, he has definitely seeing the value in our work and trying to help schools and leaders. So um, the grant allows us to give his book away um, on our platform. So the grants do work. Um, we just have to make sure that we are getting the information and um, putting that out there. We have a question from Mr. Stewart about, is there a way to have some write, one write the grant for you if you're not a grant writer? I'm going to let Bijanae answer that question. If you have any questions, put them in the chat and we will definitely answer your questions. Thank great. you, Mr. Stewart. That's a great question. Yeah, excellent question, Mr. Stewart. Um, just wanted to let you know, like I said, we offer coaching, we offer training, we also offer self-paced courses and uh, a grant writing starter kit for those people who do want to to unpack this and learn um, how to write those grants and leverage that for whatever type of program. Or mm -hmm. even if you have a team, right? Maybe you have someone else that, that you may want to co-write with. Um, I do that all the time with with um, some of my nonprofit partners where we will co-author grants together so mm -hmm. we can get the items that we need. Um, Mr. Scott, feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can reach me uh, at my webpage, www.bkconsultancy.org. That's B-K-C-O-N-S-U-L-T-A-N-C-Y.org um, so that I can help support you and answer that question in terms of finding someone to write. What we typically, though, like to do is help to build capacity of your team mm -hmm. or you so that's sustainable because say something happens to that grant writer, oh, then there goes your grant funds. Right. Right. So, but there are also people who may not have the time to to write the grant. So just reach out um, and we can find you some support. But but the best way to go at it is to know those basics, because once you um, know what they're looking for, guess what? They ask the same questions each time. That's they what I was going to say. Over and over again. <laughs> they do. Because I'm a certified grant writer and I have um, written some grants and been awarded grants. And usually once you write it, and, and to be honest, when you're writing a grant, no one really knows what you want or how to articulate it best better than you do. That's right. Um, so once you write it and basically you're just changing maybe the format or a few things here or there, and you're applying for multiple grants with mm -hmm. that same information. So just finding that time to sit down and, and just get it done mm -hmm. um, really would be beneficial and just keep plugging in the same information to the mm -hmm. different organizations uh, for the, the RFP usually is, is usually the same stuff. Right. And any good and quality grant writer is going to tell you the same thing is best that they're probably going to lean on you to co-author the grant mm -hmm. instead of just write it for you because you know your vision, you know your program or your project best. And sometimes I've also seen it to where grant writers may over promise something in a grant and say you get awarded and it's not within your capacity to be able to carry it out. That That is a sticky situation to be in because mm -hmm. once you're awarded that grant, it becomes a contract. And That's so they're true. expecting you to deliver exactly what you put into your proposal. So consider these 12 quick steps um, to help you with the foundation. Like you said, with, with Dr. Uh, Houston said, you can plug and play and swap those things around as you're shopping your program around to different foundations. So, great question. Yes, thank you. And um, one other thing that we do with the conducting business with schools, what we found is that a lot of authors, um, because they're kind of very similar to educators in that they're servants and they have servant hearts, they will give their books away, you know, um, not even charge people for them a lot of times. And what we try to educate, um, authors on is that a lot of times we do have funding in schools specifically for building classroom libraries. 
Um, my budget for priority funds was about $260,000. My Title I budget was $389,000. And my general fund budget was $38,000. And because we're a school, I was required to spend all of those funds that year. Because if you're not spending the money, it goes back to the government. So a lot of times what I find in some of my educator groups is uh, actually around this time, around February, March, these are the deadlines that are coming up for Title I programs and priority funds. And now we have ESSER funds uh, because of COVID. We have to make sure those funds are spent. So people are saying, well, I got $5,000 left. Do you, do you all have any suggestions on you know, what to buy? So don't be so quick to just assume that you know, there's no money available. A lot of times funding is available to be able to purchase what you have to offer. And from what my partner, um, Tammy, and I have seen, a lot of the quality of what the independent authors had was better than several of the larger vendors that we have been purchasing from. So we try to teach you not to sell yourself short, definitely treat it as a business and not as a hobby because, um, you know, you, you have, when you have something of quality, you want people to recognize it and, and it's worth paying for. You've put the work in a lot of times it's from your vantage point and it's something that really can connect with the children or even the educators. Um, all of every book that we purchase is not just for children. Some of it is to help build the capacity of the educators. And, and it even works for speakers as well. If you're trying to um, get a message to schools or be a motivational speaker for students. So um, thank you all so much for joining us. I want to make sure I didn't miss any questions. Here's one, Bijanae. Oh, yes. Yeah. Could you please further explain the benefit of a grant to an independent author? Yes, absolutely. So say, for example, you have a children's book, right? And you want to, in, one, in, increase your readership, right? And um, uh, increase your reach and your impact of your book. And one way to do that is by writing a grant. By writing the grant, um, essentially what you're doing is you're covering the cost to purchase those books and then possibly partner up, say, with the school so that you can provide those books to a school. Or you can maybe you want to donate those books to um, a nonprofit program that supports children that's aligned and, and targeted with that age group that your book is for. So not only teachers can benefit from grant writing um, for classroom supplies, SEL materials, for books, for STEM manipulatives, things like that. Um, but authors can, too, as a way for getting their books funded and so that you can just like Dr. Sheikah said, instead of having to give them away for free because they cost to print, right? They cost to print mm -hmm. and to ship and there's taxes involved. Mm -hmm. And so you can still increase your book's reach that way. And then maybe, and there's a whole bunch of array of things. You could do authors, you know, reading. There's a whole bunch of tons of other things that um, that Dr. Uh, Sheikah Houston can share with you about through their program. Um, we also have specifically an author's writing grant writing course coming up. So stay tuned to our show um, and also follow us on my IG page at, um, under, at BK underscore consultancy, because we also share when we have an upcoming grant writing class that you can tap into. Also get some continue education units and learn how you can um, increase your readership through grants for your mm -hmm. book. That is awesome. And um to add to what Bijane stated, as an author, if you do want to give your books away, just like Dr. Gil Nome did, don't just give them away out of your pocket, write the grant and donate them to, you know, whatever school or whatever organization you would like to uh, donate it for. But don't sell yourself short. Um, the large retailers that we purchase from, a lot of their programs are five to ten thousand um, dollars for just one box or one kit so we have to purchase multiples for classrooms and for 
the whole school. So when I'm telling you don't sell yourself short, I truly mean that because um, those larger organizations are not giving us any discounts. Um, they are priced max, top top pricing. So, um, you know, definitely don't sell yourself short. Like I said, from what we've seen, the quality of what independent authors have to offer, sometimes they don't know how valuable what they have is and how much it draws our children in to get them more connected. And it's just what we needed to build that love for reading to make sure we're putting things in their hands that they're going to gravitate to and, you know, just spark an interest because a lot of what's happening with the so-called achievement gap is some students aren't learning things that they're interested in. So when we're able to supplement the, the curriculum with things that they are interested in, that's how we're able to, to grab them and capture that attention and really change the trajectory of their lives. So together we can um, make a difference. Um, so thank you for joining us, Bijanay, and telling us all of your the information about your grant program. And if you're an independent author and would like more information about our Conducting Business with Schools program, or if you're a speaker, uh, the program would work for you as well. We show you how to create your messaging to make sure it's, you're showing how you're going to solve some problems for the school, as well as being able to connect to the different things that we have going on at different times of the year, connecting to specific um, initiatives that we have going on in schools. So we just really show you how to align with the curriculum and really better your chances of doing business with schools than if you're not familiar with the education system. And those are priceless tips, let me tell you, because they are unpacking school talk, school yes. speak, right? It's its own culture, its own language, and they just give you the 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 Da Vinci Code. So they unpack everything for you. And then with that information, you know, you can come my way and we can help build you a grant um, uh, application or proposal that will help, again, fund your books so that you're not having to donate them for free. Um, those costs can be covered. You are um, increasing your readership as well as the impact of your book because you want to get them in readers' hands, right? You wrote that book. That's your genius um, is out there for a reason. And so we want to help support um, and collaborate together to be able to do that. So yes, that is exactly right. And one of our modules is actually called Educanese <laughs> because it is its own language. And if you don't know it, a lot of times you won't know how to navigate the system. So we do teach you all of that. And um, we also have a package deal if you're interested in both. So uh, if you're interested in that, make sure you ask that question specifically and we can get you that information. So we really appreciate you all for joining us. We hope that you were able to garner something from this. Uh, we're going to put our websites in the comments. If you put it in now before I log off Bijane, um, they'll be able to see it. It so. doesn't even allow me to type anything in there. Oh, really? So. <laughs> no. I'll send it to you and then see if you can transfer put it. Put it in the chat and then I'll copy it over. So our website is uh, www.createandeducate.solutions. And I'm going to put um, Bijanay's website in as well. And if you fill out the form on the website and let us know that you're an author and that you're interested in um, the Conducting Business with Schools program, we will get that out to you. So thank you again for joining us. Was the first one, did I have the first one right? Okay. Thank you all again for joining us. We appreciate you tuning in and uh, be sure to share this with any other um, educators or authors that you know that would benefit from this information. So good night, everybody. Thank night. you. Thank you.